Seabird 198, when localizer established, send dollar. Seabird 198, can you give me a wind check, please? So hi, good morning uh, or good day, everybody. This, uh, this is uh, the headquarters of our Baltic. We're here in the crew briefing room preparing our flight uh, today. My name is Gerhard Ramke. I'm the, uh, the chief pilot on the Sea Series uh, with our Baltic and um, my colleague for today's flight. Uh, so my name is Alan Erwistow and I'm uh, the technical pilot on the C-Series for Air Baltic. Yeah, so my, my main job is uh, basically to assist the, uh, the technical pilot. I will do that today as well as I'm flying on the right seat. Alan will be flying left seat and uh, will be in charge of the flight today. Um, we've basically completed our flight preparation so far, had a look at the, uh, the usual figures, the weather, Nordums, uh, load of the aircraft, uh, which means passenger figures, uh, cargo and uh, so forth. Um, we uh, are basically uh, fully booked. Um, we've got a few, only a few seats available on the flight to London and on the flight back. Um, I'll tell you something about the flight times once we uh, join the cabin crew. Um, we've got a 45 minute turnaround in, uh, in London. That is rather an average. It's not too sporty, but uh, not too long either. And um, yeah, the weather, as you can see, um, we uh, just celebrated midsummer here in Latvia. Unfortunately, we've just got 18 degrees here today. It's a little bit rainy, a little bit gray and wet, um, but um, just, a, just a perfect condition to get all the clouds into the sunshine and enjoy the flight to, uh, to London. Perfect, so here we are. Hi to all of you. I'm Gerhard. Hello, Alina. Alina. Evo. Evo. I'm Svetlana, I will be the senior for this flight today. Great, good to see you. Another. Fine. And, um, super, I'll sign that one quickly. Very nice, thanks for that. Thank you. Good. London for us today on Bravo. Bravo is on stand 303. It came back from uh, Charles de Gaulle and it is on ground since a while. The aircraft is so far okay. Um, there are no specials um, technically, so the aircraft is good. Passenger figures uh, should be as announced uh, on the briefing sheets. So we basically have uh, roughly full house uh, with only a few seats available. Um, forward and back. Turnaround time, 45 minutes in London. And the flight times themselves are uh, 2.20 on the way to and uh, 2.20 on the way back, actually. It's uh, both ways the same. So, uh, hello. We are now going to do a pre-flight walk around, which we do on uh, every flight, basically. Uh, it's a general uh, overview of the aircraft and condition of the aircraft. So, we're looking for uh, anything that's obvious damage, leaks, uh, yeah, FODs, the foreign object damage, etc. Summertime, it's uh, important to look for bird strikes, basically. So, we, s we start uh, at the forward uh, passenger door and then we walk around the nose and end up again back at the forward uh, passenger door. So, we're looking at uh, the oxygen uh, burst disc. Uh, it should be green. If it's not, that means that we had an overpressure and uh, there's no oxygen again. Or anymore in the, in the system. Otherwise, the doors is not too much free play. We check the tires for condition, no cuts or, or worn down. Checking uh, there's no leaks on the uh, Oleo and that it's inflated, that we have actually visible chrome here. And we're as well looking for anything that uh, suspicious that could have been placed on board. We're doing actually a security check as well. Checking that the gear pin has been taken out to prevent the gear from uh, retracting on the ground. Checking the, uh, the skin, uh, this area here between those gray marks, that's the RVSM area. So we have to check uh, especially for any dents or damages there. The, uh, the angle, sorry, the uh, pedal probes, they're actually called smart probes on this aircraft. And uh, we have four of them check that uh, they're not obstructed and there is no discoloration angle attack veins in the ice detector probe on the top there and we check the windshields the windshield wipers
The pitot probes here on the right side. That's our temperature probe. We have a forward avionics bay here. So we just check that it's actually secured. Uh, we also have visual indication in the flight deck if it's open. The antennas and drains checking. We're checking uh, particularly around any place where we have uh, interface with ground support equipment. So typically the cargo doors and the doors. Check the frames that they've not been damaged. Wing inspection lights and then we have uh, the, uh, the landing lights here. Checking that the uh, this is the air conditioning inlet. It's not obstructed or any foreign objects there. Fueling panel, it's all set. Checking the leading edges of the wing, uh, the nacelle, the cowling, uh, that the uh, latches are not open. The fan blades. And then we have the P2 T2 Pro for the engine. And here we're checking that the uh, pre-cooler exit door isn't open and also that the oil uh, access door is, is closed and properly latched. And that's a fuel adapter there. The door should be closed. The NACA vents for the surge tanks. The uh, nav light lens cover, winglet, static uh, dischargers. Checking the, the tires, the same as for the na uh, nose landing gear, there is no visible damage or it's not worn. Checking the harnesses, these are electrical harnesses, it's electric brakes on the aircraft. So uh, basically there is no hydraulics from the wing down on this aircraft for the main landing gear. The shimmy damper, checking the oil level, it's not over or under serviced. We can also check the brake wear. We have uh, only one pin per, uh, per brake unit here, and it's difficult to see. The pin is actually under, under here. You can see it where I'm pointing. So you have to stand at a specific angle to see it. Otherwise, we have a brake wear indication in the flight deck. But that only becomes active when the brakes are worn more than 90%. Checking that the, the ground lock is not installed. Checking that there is no leakage in the uh, uh, call it? The, the main la landing gear wheel well. And then uh, the wheel well itself, it's a uh, wheel bin, so it's uh, nice and clean. There is only uh, the uh, overheat detection loop inside. Surrounds of the cargo door, it's all secure. Then we have uh, an area that we pay close attention to, that's the, uh, the tail from this section and aft. That is uh, composite, so it's carbon composite, so any kind of damage there is, is kind of critical. It may not be uh, a big thing on the, on the outside, but it could have delamination, so it has to be checked actually if, if we see anything there. Stabilizer, as well we have uh, static discharges on the elevator, we check. Uh, the landing, uh, sorry, the, uh, the nav lights and the tail and the strobe as well, the rudder.
and basically the left side of the aircraft is the same as the right side. There is there is no big difference. And the wings on the C series is also made of carbon uh, composite, so it's also critical that there is no no damage on those. And there you're in that is clean, clear. Landing lights and then there's the fuselage. And that's basically it. So that's what we check. Airplane is in good condition. Alan, are yeah. you ready for some clearance? Yes I am. Great. Who are we? Six probably. Or? Concord Air Baltic 6, Bravo Lima, stand 303, we've got Zulu 1004, clearance to London Gatwick, please. Baltic 6, Bravo Lima, hello, ground, clear to get to Kravna 18, valid for Echo departure, Cook 4303. Valid for Echo, runway 184303, Baltic 6, Bravo Lima. Great, so it's going to be a, a right sea takeoff. We've just discussed the weather. There are no items on the uh, on the airplane, and um, runway surface, taxiway surfaces are wet, which we uh, have taken into account with our performance calculation. Uh, we have been cleared via the valet um, for echo departure, and I'll brief that in detail in just a minute. So we'll just look into performance initially, and. Um, We've calculated for uh, either echo or full length uh, runway 18. Full length runway 18, uh, 3,200 meters available. The runway is wet. We've got a wind out of 090 zero degrees and 16 knots, 17 degrees, uh, 1004, take a void 59.3. And um, yeah, we, have the, uh, we have the CDL, so it's a drag index of, index of 0.2. Yes, Alan. <laughs> Um, so, makes a difference. Yeah, exactly. Huge. Good point. Um, here we are. Um, Ground to cockpit. Stand by. Okay. So, take off to 81.1. We've got. Um, Flap to full length and um, speeds 130, 139, and 42. They're all posted. V2. And um, initial climb is 4,000 feet. Valet for echo runway 18. Um, we've got the anti ice off, um, nose down 3.7, and the bleed is on the engines. Um, Valet for echo. On runway track, 178 for runway 18, distance of 3.8 as a minimum, and uh, we may get a right turn inbound to Valet, roughly uh, 255, 254 on the chart. Minimum sector altitude, 1,700 feet to the west, and um, initial climb is, as uh, stated, 4,000 feet. Um, we have to contact departures, 29925, and um, then the route is checked so far down to London. Any questions? No. That's, that's a normal, non-normal. Um, in case of any malfunction, we have recognized this will call failure. You will uh, take controls and call stop. My controls, you'll bring the aircraft to a full stop. 
and um, you'll set the parking brake. I expect you then to inform the cabin. I'll inform the tower. We'll get together, make a common decision on how to proceed and, uh, and uh, what to do. Yep. We'll execute the checklist, and uh, again, you the cabin, me uh, the tower. Okay. The uh, engine failure takeoff is based on uh, purely straight ahead, and uh, we'll get ourselves uh, radar vectors or decide on a holding, whatever uh, is more suitable for us. Mm. Accelerates. 900 or 1,000. Yep, exactly. 900. 900. Oh, that's fine. Good with you? Yep. Super. Ground of Altic. Uh, 6, Bravo Lima, request to start a push. Stand 3, sir. Altic 6, Bravo Lima, stand by shortly. You are blocked now. Standing by. Have to stand by. About the uh, six Bravo checked. Lima, now start up and push back on uniform approved, can H1003. 003, we have and start a push on uniform approved, uh, Baltic 6 Bravo Lima. You can pin a taxi holding point echo contact tower, 118 decimal. Yeah, position uncertainty of 0 0.00 nautical miles, so. Which is? It's very accurate. <laughs> Check the elevator for full movement, ailerons and spoilers. Bravo Lima, when will you be ready to taxi? Rudder has expanded. Stand by just a minute. That's where we check the rudder. Full movement, flight controls are checked. Ring ground, Airbo uh, Love DN Air Baltic uh, 627 stand 106, request clearance to Venice. It actually looks quite frightening, doesn't it? With all the yellow and all the red. Red is always bad. But basically, the, uh, the display of the colors is uh, all related to elevation. So we're, of course, at sea level here at the moment. And um, with that, everything on the right side is free as well. Everything which is higher, of course, appears in, uh, in the uh, in the suitable colors, which would be then yellow and red if it's much uh, above. That will change at the latest when we take off. Riga, with the Bay of Riga here, and we're going to depart towards the west. Cabin is ready. Checked before takeoff. Before takeoff checklists. Cabin. Ready. Anti-ice left cow. Auto. Wing. Auto. Right cow. Auto. The auto brake. RTO. I cast an info. Checked. Now you can box. Yes. It's done and the before takeoff checklist is complete. Thank you. Charlie of the Anabaltic 6 Bravo Lima approaching Golf 18. Fully ready. Anabaltic 6 Bravo Lima, Riga Tower, wind 0, 9 at 0 degrees, 1, 6 knots, runway 18, clear for takeoff. Clear takeoff 18, Baltic 6 Bravo Lima. Clear takeoff. We are clear for takeoff. Are you ready? For I am ready. Lights and belts. Yep. Go ahead. Lights. Yeah, that signal worked. And uh, put the weather radar on. Checked. Entering runway 18. Golf left side is um, free. Right side is free. Approach sector is clear. I 
thrust. Perfect. Park good to Mazda Airport. Policing Bravo Lima, hello, we got out of contact, comfortable 280. Climbing 280, Baltic 6 Bravo Lima. 280, autopilot on. 280 is checked. Heading auto. Checked. B flight level change, climb C. Checked. For Victor, contact minus Observe selected. Perfect, thanks. After takeoff checklist, ECAS is checked. Checklist complete. Thank you. Three and a half, we can uh, go for standard. Set. Seems to be all clear on the weather radar. Right Three ten thousand. And uh, lights, and I think we can take the belts as well. Belts goes auto. Thank you. Accelerating, and we can take the weather radar off again. Once uh, again, very welcome on board this uh, Baltic flight uh, from Riga to uh, London Gatwick. We've reached our cruising altitude, uh, that's currently uh, 38,000 feet, which is equivalent to 11,600 meters. And uh, up here it's nice and sunny, so we've left the gray uh, and uh, slightly wet conditions in Riga. And we're nicely established on our cruise. A uh, little bit of a wiggle here, but not really any turbulences so far. And uh, we're currently doing a speed here of uh, 0.78 Mach. And um, yeah. Uh, with our weight, we are intending to stay up here at uh, 380 for now. Um, as you can see here on this nice little map display, it's uh, basically picturing Europe. We've got uh, Germany here centered, um, uh, the UK and Ireland, um, France down here, and you've got up here the Latvian states um, with uh, Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania down here and uh, Poland further down, Scandinavia up here, and it shows a little bit our route as we are a little bit into our journey already. The aircraft symbol here located uh, just above the, uh, the Baltic Sea with Sweden um, here just on our right hand side. So we've left Riga with a, uh, with a west course um, over uh, the, uh, the western part of Latvia, the Latvian coastline here at Liepaja before we uh, then are proceeding further, as I said, over the Baltic Sea, reaching German airspace uh, pretty soon. And then we'll continue uh, from Germany into the Netherlands. We will pass Amsterdam before we then cross the channel and go into London. You can see that maybe a little bit here. Latvia located in the eastern part of, uh, of Europe. And uh, you've got the, uh, the three uh, Baltic states with uh, Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania up here. And Riga, the capital of Latvia, here in the Bay of Riga of the Baltic Sea. And again, this is exactly the route we have been taking. And we are approximately here at the moment now over the uh, Baltic Sea, just uh, south of Sweden. We've got uh, roughly um, an hour and 40 minutes to go. 
So we are uh, 40 minutes into our flight, still a distance of uh, 690 miles to go. We got a nice little direct here um, to uh, a waypoint called Elde, and that's 380 miles ahead of us. Um, passengers 300 and uh, correction not 300 100 would be nice actually 300 in a in a, in a c series 300 um so uh one uh, slightly more than 130 passengers uh, we've got on board and they're just enjoying their, their meal service at the moment with the cabin crew taking care of them yeah uh what else can i tell you at the moment um we've got um, of course a nice uh, brand new fresh aircraft um, which we're flying here today. It is actually the second aircraft which we took delivery uh, from uh, Bombardier. Uh, Charlie Sierra Bravo, the second aircraft, has been delivered to us um, at uh, the beginning of uh, January. And since then, it's uh, been roughly flying 1,350 flight hours with uh, about, I think it was, I have to have a look, six, 730 um, cycles. Um, so all of the fleet is uh, still very new, as you know, the, uh, the CS, the C-Series in general has just been introduced and we as the launch operator on the CS-300, um, we have uh, been taking delivery now in the last seven months of five aircraft. We are expecting two more to join the fleet uh, just in a few weeks and uh, then we'll be running the summer with, a, with an eighth aircraft uh, a little bit later to come uh, with eight aircraft. Um, the very modern, this is the most modern uh, single aisle aircraft uh, you can find on the market at the moment. We've got uh, five huge screens on which we can display the, uh, the information just the way we would like to have it with, uh, with uh, map displays just in any, in any way it, uh, you'd like to, um, to have uh, your route, the terrain, all of the surroundings uh, being displayed. Um, so many, many options on there. Um, the FMS, we locate that down here on, uh, on, the, uh, on the fifth screen, which is nicely centered, and uh, with our route information here, and then uh, we take performance uh, information on the other side. Uh, currently, we are looking at our cruise performance, and then, of course, with the phase of flight, it comes from the departure over the climb to the cruise, and then, of course, the descent and the arrival, um, giving us uh, the... Uh, the necessary speeds, uh, our weights, and all of uh, the information you, you do need to have for the performance. Yeah, and with that, uh, I'll let Alan uh, continue a little later on. Enjoy the flight. So, we're slowly closing into London Gatwick. Um, we've got uh, roughly 40 minutes to go, and um, a distance of about 230 nautical miles that's of course our flying distance we've got a, a slight routing with uh, a little bowl there to the south uh, when once we uh, reach the uh, the english coastline um, we're just uh, a beam of uh, of amsterdam um, so we're coming in uh, we're in the netherlands here as you can see uh, moving into the channel and um, we're just um, a beam of amsterdam with all its runways there so it's we're passing it on the left hand side unfortunately not uh, really much to see as we've got a solid cloud layer there below us um, once we um, we have passed amsterdam um, we will basically be um, going uh, south westbound and i think we can see that nicely like this south westbound um, so uh, with reaching the uh, the coastline here, we go down towards Brighton. Um, we have to fly this uh, this little arrival here with this turn, as uh, of course London is an incredibly busy area um, with a lot of airports around. Um, Gatwick uh, has runway 26 left in operation at the moment, uh, which is more or less a straight in if we would not have to fly this little turn here. Um, so that's uh, just dependent on the arrival. Otherwise, we've received our weather already um, from Gatwick, put it into our uh, performance page um, of the FMS. 17 degrees, a wind uh, slightly from our left side there with 2308 knots and um, a rather low key and H of uh, 997 at the moment. We intend to land with flaps four. Um, we could land with one more flap setting, flap five. We chose flap four. And uh, with that, we've got an, uh, a final speed of about 135 uh, knots. Um, that's roughly 240 kilometers per hour with which we'll uh, be touching down. Um, otherwise, the weather is quite okay in, uh, in London. 
and uh, we will very soon start our descent. 360 set. Good Thanks, there. 360 checked. Flying into Gatwick uh, is um, is not really a, a, an, an extraordinary challenge. It's uh, it's a very well managed uh, airport. Uh, air traffic control is incredibly uh, efficient there. I think it is the uh, the most efficient uh, single runway uh, operation in entire Europe. Uh, see the frequency of the aircraft going in and out of uh, London Catwick, you'll be absolutely amazed. Um, so they'll put us into the sequence there. There will be aircraft taking off in between. I very much hope that we get a little bit of a glimpse uh, of, uh, of that. Alan, are you ready for a briefing? Fully ready. Perfect, great. So we're on our descent already. Flight level 290 is set, 1500 or more we have to have. Uh, and uh, we're still inbound Gorlo. Um, performance wise, uh, runway 26 left in uh, user Gatwick, temperature 17 degrees, the wind is set with 2308 knots, 997 on the Q&H, and we've set that on the uh, standby instrument. Landing weight uh, for us is 54.6, and uh, we intend to land with uh, flap 4. Um, that gives us a speed of uh, 136, 135 we've got on the FMS, and 142. Um, Operational landing distance would be 11.44. You've got the same? Yep. Perfect, great. Then look, let's look uh, into the uh, into the routing. So, we do expect to arrive with a Timber 1 Juliet. We haven't uh, received our clearance yet, but uh, we've uh, put that all into the box and we'll have a little look uh, at that initially. So Timber 1 Juliet uh, takes us uh, from airing um, 2 to 4 inbound to Aptum. Aptum Two zero by Gorlo. Two nine, two nine zero by Gorlo. Yeah, put no it. vertical downing. No. I'll, okay. No. You want it or not? No, no. Oh. That's all fine. Thanks. So flight all two nine zero by Gorlo. Just confirm. Execute. Execute. There we go. Um, so Aptum uh, and um, flight level one four zero. That's uh, where we were. From there, we, we proceed inbound to Arnhem, and uh, then we're slight right turn to two forty two forty five to Lark, and from Lark Timber. Timber. We have to have uh, 250 on the speed and flight level 70, which is in the box. So that's pretty fine. Then uh, we'll take the next page, and uh, that will be for our transition. We're coming in via Timber and then uh, continuing via Mayfield. And uh, from Mayfield, um, 003 to 8.5 of Mayfield, and then uh, uh, we turn inbound to the center fix. The ILS for um, runway 26 left, that's plate uh, 21-2A. Final amount of 258, and uh, we've got an, uh, a frequency of uh, 110.9. Top of descent, V pump owned. Uh, I checked. 118480. Perfect. You want to Clearance received. Timber 1 Juliet, Gatwick, so we have that. Checked. And then, uh, so as I said, 110.9. Final number 258259 uh, in the FMS, and um, final platform, we would be coming out of 2000. Um, standard three degrees down to minimums of posted 400, and uh, in case of a missed approach, we would be uh, climbing on uh, runway track 3000, and straight ahead of 2000, 
Warrior one mile, inbound which appears to lay down, then turn left, heading 179, and we do expect to see uh, radar vectors. Great. Rear sector altitude uh, for the final approach is uh, 2300. Just reaching 290 now, what's the level off? this cap checked super fake heading um two six left we do um, intend to vacate via fox uh, romeo or uh, golf romeo or fox romeo i think is what we should be able to to make order break low for that one and uh, i'll use uh, reverse and at 60 knots uh, you'll be taking over yeah you know? good and then we expect a taxi either backwards uh, zero eight left or we take Juliet whatever is advised and um, then uh, we will have uh, a stand around the pier too um, and we'll get that a little bit later check okay any questions on that oh super then we can do a descend and approach checklist please One eight zero is copies. Three four five on the heading, and we are reducing speed. Flat one, please. Flat one selected. Five thousand feet. Would you speed? One eight zero. One eight zero selected. Three one eight zero. Check. Select flap two, please. Flap two selected. Thank you. Level six six Bravo Lima. Turn left heading two nine zero degrees. Establish on the localizer two six left and descend with the glide path. Uh, left turn 290, and uh, we can establish on the localizer and continue descent on the glide path there, Baltic uh, 6, probably not. So, left turn 290, we cleared for the localizer and further descent on the glide. Yep. That's approach arms. Checked. Glide service alive. Checked. A line 606 Alpha, down at heading 345. Head 345, Air 606 now. Bravo 66, Bravo Lima, contact the tower, 124, that's the Tower 124, 224, Air Baltic 6, Bravo Lima, good day. Aldous Cabin, Aldous. Hi, Grant, 125, Charlie, thanks. Perfect. Tower, good afternoon, Air Baltic 6, Bravo Lima, ILS uh, 26 left. Aldous 66, Bravo Lima, get back low, continue approach, on me 26 left. Continue approach, Air Baltic 6, Bravo Lima. Clouds of captured. Checked. Not trans victor uniform tower behind the landing, 757 short final, find Mike line up 26 left behind. Behind the landing, 757 Mike 1 line up white behind, North trans 8 victor uniform. Five miles, gear down please, flap 4. Gear down, flap 4 selected. Auto throttle disengage. Auto throttle. Checks. Auto throttle. For landing checklist. Four miles, final speed. Yes, please. Jeff Rose, landing airbox, we're ready. We're ready. Okay. For landing checklist, altimeters. Please, all demeters are 997, 1300 now, set across. 997, set across, check, flap. Cab is 4 indicating. Cab is 1000. Ready. Take off, not translate the key. Flight checks completed. Thank you. Late landing clearance. Yeah, that's behind cool. the landing uh, bombardier shot final via Alpha line up on with 26 left behind. Behind the landing shot, we'll line up 26 left via Alpha. We're behind one country. Well, 26 Bravo, departing 737, clear to land 26 left, wind 230, 6 knots. After 737, taking off, clear to land 26 left, the Baltic Bravo. After 737. Yeah, and I suggest you have to get a continue approach on with 26 left. It's going down the runway there. 
getting airborne now. It's off. Red line. Super, there we go. Autopilot off. Plus 100. Contact. Roger, Hans Avid, here in the form line, the control, 120.525, bye-bye. Minimums. Roger, Hans Avid, Speedbird 49 Mike, Golf Juliet, stand 1-0. 
Unit 10 10, clear for now, Mike Hall. Three bird A1 Hotel Mike, hold on Mike 1, monitor tower 124.225. Mike 1 tower 124.225, three bird A1 Hotel Mike. Bravo, Bronco, zero three, request taxi. Royal M Rock 803, uh, taxi uh, Papa, and hold short of Juliet. Got him inside? Yep. Ground could after any hit five Golf oh, Yankee, uh, just heading right to zero eight left. AG65 Golf Yankee, uh, ground good afternoon. Uh, zero eight to left and Romeo to the northern end, stand 565. Uh, zero eight left, Romeo to the northern end, stand 565, AG65 Golf Yankee. Now the AG35 unit for Michael Patterson. AG35, a uniform echo, hold short of Papa. Hold short of Papa, Fire 1, Bravo, Papa, Kilo, head to stand. Papa, Kilo, head to stand, Fire 1, Bravo. So here we are in Gatwick, welcome everybody. Um, not the most spectacular approach, but definitely uh, something where you need to concentrate a little bit. Um, we're just going to disembark our 135 passengers now. And uh, then we've got uh, roughly 40 minutes time to turn around and get the airplane ready for the flight back to, uh, to Riga. And Alan it will, be will, will be his turn. Alan will be doing the flight, exactly. I'll be monitoring very, very close what he's going to do. <laughs> think I can do it? Not quite sure. I'll do my very best to assist you. And with that, we'll, uh, we'll get it moving.